What's going on YouTube? This is Wayne with Wayne's Fish World. I'm coming at you with another educational video today. We're going to be talking about the top 10 facts and myths about UV sterilizers or ultraviolet sterilizers. Now, we're going to start this video off with what exactly is a UV sterilizer and why do I need it? Well, why do I need it? I'm going to answer that throughout the entire video. But, what is a UV sterilizer? A UV sterilizer is pretty much a tube of light, ultraviolet light, what is that? The sun gives us cancer, it will give us skin cancer. Well, that ultraviolet light is what gives us skin cancer. Now imagine you have the ultraviolet light in a tube and you isolate it in your tank. It sounds dangerous, and it, it, it can be, but if maintained properly, it, shall, it should not bring any harm to you. Um, one thing about ultraviolet sterilizers is one, you never want to touch the bulb with your bare hands. You always want to use a glove. The oils from your hand can actually damage the bulb. And two, never look directly at the bulb. It can ruin the retinas in your eye. Now, I'm not telling you if you look at it, you're going to go blind, but don't be dumb. Just look at it in the corner of your eye to see if it's on. So, a UV sterilizer is basically a tube of light, and it comes in many different sizes. Uh, I've seen them come through the smallest of a 4.5 watt all the way up to commercial grade to 400 watts. They might come bigger than that, but honestly, if you're, if you're watching this video, you probably don't need anything bigger than a 400 watt UV sterilizer. And if you get anything about that, anything bigger than that, you probably know a lot more than me about them. So, they come in many different sizes and there's many different forms. There's an inline version and a submersible version. And there's a couple different submersible versions too. The inline versions is what I have on my tank. It's a tubing that has it's a tube that has two fittings on it, an inlet and an outlet. And you basically rough plumb it into your system, either through a turn line, a drain, uh, a separate pump, but water goes into one tube and comes out the other. And for the Inlines, there's a couple different versions too. You have the one where the water passes straight through, or you have what's called the Turbo Twist. Now, I had the Odyssey's version of the Turbo Twist for a cheaper price, but does the same thing. And what that means is water spirals around the column of the tube. That way, the light has longer penetration time to hit the, uh, the algae or disease or whatever you're trying to hit in your water column. Now, for the submersible ones, there's ones kind of like a submersible heater where it has a little pump on it and it draws water in and shoots it out. And there's types that use a power head and the power head pumps the water through it and then it comes out the UV sterilizers. There's many different types and it's really going to depend on what manufacturer makes it. So. Now we know what a UV sterilizer is, we know the uh, types, we know the sizes. So this is the biggest question probably. What's the flow rate I'm going to use with my ultraviolet sterilizer? Well, it's all going to depend. The good thing about ultraviolet sterilizers, you can use them on freshwater tanks, saltwater tanks, and ponds. Now, there's a lot of debating on what size ultraviolet sterilizer you need. Put it this way, guys. If an 18 watt UV sterilizer can take care of a pond that's a couple hundred gallons, why do you need a 18 watt sterilizer on a tank that's not even 100 gallons? And there is a difference in in tanks and ponds, but when you only need an 18 watt sterilizer for a thousand gallon pond in partial sun, why do you need a 36 watt sterilizer for a 30 gallon system? you really need to look who you're talking to. Is it the manufacturer trying to sell you something? Is it the pet store trying to sell you something? No offense to all the pet stores out there because there are some really great stores out there. Or is it the truth? My debate on that is if you have a 55 gallon, you know, it, it all depends on what you're trying to do. And that's where the flow rate comes through too. So we have to back ourselves up and ask us ourselves, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to kill algae to make the water crystal clear like in this tank? Or are we trying to kill parasites 
or try to prevent parasites or we try to do both. Now, if you're trying to kill algae, you kind of, your water flow can be faster than the, for parasites. I mean, it can be faster for algae rather than parasites. And what I mean by that is you don't want to pump too much water too fast through your UV light because if the UV light can't hit the algae in time, it's not going to take an effect. So with ponds, it's a little bit more complex. With tanks, you really don't have to worry about it because it's a smaller system. With ponds, let's put it this way. I have a 36 watt UV sterilizer on my 1,500 gallon koi pond, which is in direct sun all day. And especially in the heat of summer, where sun comes up at like 5.30 and goes down at like 9.30 at night. 36 watts can take care of a, a overpopulated pond. So when I look at that aspect, I don't need that big of a sterilizer on a fish tank. So if you're killing algae, Dr. Foster and Smith has a good link on their page on what you can look at. Uh, it, it all depends on your bio load too, but that's a different topic. Your biological filtration should be able to get it and you should not get a UV sterilizer to kill an algae problem. You can see there's algae on this rocks because there's nitrogen and phosphate breaking down this tank right now. But there's none in the water column because the UV sterilizer is hitting it. So flow rate, it's debatable. I can ramble. The best way I can answer that for you, if you have a question, comment me what size flow UV sterilizer should I get for my tank. Tell me your aspects and then I can tell you what size UV light you need and your flow rate or what are you trying to accomplish by it. Now for parasites, you're going to need more light and less flow. That way the water can hit it longer and it's going to hit it harder. Um, I believe parasites can die off by low watt sterilizers too, but the higher the wattage, the faster it's going to kill it or anything in general. So do UV sterilizers actually kill them? Yes, they do. They're not going to kill them that's, let's say if there's a parasite swimming around in my tank right here and he never crosses that overflow which leads down into the drain which goes through the sump which returns to the UV sterilizer then the return pump and then finally hitting that. If he's swimming around this tank and he never gets pushed through that UV sterilizer it's not going to affect him. The UV sterilizer is only going to affect what goes through it. You need to remember that. Like I said, this algae on the glass, that UV sterilizer cannot kill that algae because that rock is not going to pass through my UV sterilizer. If it does, everything's going to break on the system. So, that's another question. Killing beneficial bacteria. Does a UV sterilizer actually kill beneficial bacteria? Let me put it this way. Beneficial bacteria, that is why they tell you get so many pounds of sand, so many pounds of live rock. Same concept in fresh water, brackish water, and pond too. Your surface area, I, I can debate about this all freaking day and I'm big on this one. Your surface area is what you should be worrying about when it comes to beneficial bacteria. You shouldn't be worrying about your water column. Your beneficial bacteria is going to grow on your rocks, your sand, your walls, your heater, your pumps everything. It does not grow in the water column. Yes, it floats around in it sometimes, but it's mainly on surface area. So, should you be worrying about it killing your beneficial bacteria? No. And I can debate about that all day. Another question about UV sterilizers is, good God, they're expensive. No, not all UV sterilizers are $100, $300. I got this UV, UV sterilizer for 33 bucks, and look how clean it made my tank. Uh, the water is crystal clear. Sometimes, guys, you need to learn this in life. Different companies will make different products. One company can have a child uh, company, and they don't have to tell you, and they still make money off that. Take this for example, GM. GM makes Chevy and uh, GMC. They make Sierras and they make Silverados. They look identical, but they're priced different. Now, all you Chevy people, I know you can ramble about that, but let me talk to you Ford people like me. 
Lincolns, F-150s, they look exactly the same. Basically, Ford makes them. Uh, you have parent companies. You tool people. You know Bosch and DeWalt are the same thing. Uh, or was it Porter Cable? I'm sorry. But um, you get my point. Don't pay for the name. Pay for the quality. Pay for what it actually does. If you see a product that can do the same exact thing and is just as durable as that name brand, big name brand product, you might want to look into it. So I had the Odyssey uh, 9 watt equivalent of the Turbo Twist on here and big shout out to him. Top dog sellers on eBay, you really need to check him out. I've got three lights from him, T5 high outputs, a heater, and a UV sterilizer from him. I've never had a problem with them. And you can actually see it in the uh, reverse osmosis reservoir right there. That's the old body of the unit. I sent a message and I said, man, I'm not trying to rip you off, but the, uh, the body was leaking. He sent me a new body for free. Big shout out to Top Dog Sellers. Thank you for all the customer service over the years. Big shout out. Um, so, guys, UV sterilizers, they can be rewarding. It's, it's only going to do good on your tank. And here's where the big myth comes in. In salt water, the biggest myth is it's not going to allow your protein skimmers to remove phosphates in the water column. Well, basically what that is, I'm not going to go too in-depth with it, but they say the UV light that hits the water column will affect the ions in the phosphate, and the phosphate doesn't break down as, as natural, and then it doesn't even get sucked up by your skimmer. If you have a UV sterilizer that can do all that, you have some high power, probably 400 watt plus UV sterilizer, and guys, don't worry about that. Never have I actually heard an experience. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, if you have a problem with phosphates due to your UV sterilizer, for one, if that you're having a problem with that, you should probably take it off, but I've never actually heard of it. It's just a rumor. Some people claim it. If you've actually had proof of it happen, drop it in the comments. That way people can learn because that's the best thing, guys. The best way we can share, you know, that's knowledge. Knowledge is free. We need to share it. That way we can prevent loss. We can enjoy the hobby or pet keeping longer. Knowledge is the best thing we can spread around, and that's why I make videos. And second thing, the biggest rumor in freshwater plant tanks with UV sterilizers is it will react with your fertilizers and mess your water system up. Well, let me tell you this. Fertilizers are already present in your water column. The fertilizers you introduce in your tank are just more concentrated versions. There are, There is iron, there is phosphorus, there is potassium, there is zinc, copper. All those micro macronutrients, they're already present in your water in your tap water but when you put them in your tank they're more concentrated so if the UV sterilizer was going to react with them they would already react with the ones in your tap water guys go buy yourself UV sterilizers it only can do good do the research have a plan have dedication and just have fun guys if you have any questions let me know if you have suggestions on the next videos of the top 10 things you need to know let me know Drop it in the comments, hit me with a message, comment, rate, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Later.